Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, Handmade by Ying with Donna. Today is September the 7th and it's 6.30 p.m. And we're back for yet another little tidbit and a little project. This is definitely impromptu. And towards the end, I'm going to go ahead and since it's September the 7th, we're going to do the birthday giveaway. Bebe was in the house today. She drew and she had to go to her next activity. So we've already got it listed and labeled and ready to go. I just... I'm hoping that the recipient of this one slips into the chat in a bit during the live and that we'll be able to share some love for the recipient. So with all that being said, per special request today, we're doing little tiny, tiny, tiny rope bowls. They turn out stinking adorable and you won't be disappointed. So I'm going to slip into the chat real quick and tell everybody hello. Maureen, um, hello, looking forward to seeing this bowl done. It's stinking amazing. Sung with Lewayne, just watched the last live and now here, two in a day. Yay, absolutely. I agree. <laughs> um, I missed this afternoon. I was watching Kathy's Quilts and Crafts. I was popping in and out of hers too, just a lurking. Um, hello, everyone from Joe. Hello um, from Courtney. Courtney, thank you for jumping on tonight. Linda Denton, hello, sweetheart. And we're here so you can see these. So if you've got your clothesline, it's really 100% cotton's all you need. Any kind of thread or bobbin. And we're going to keep it really simple just so you can get the basics. Kathleen, hi, Donna, Joe, and everyone. Sells about the die cutting eggs, LOL. I'll join you from the other room. And if you take your time, sweetheart. So let me see here. Um, Deborah, hello. Um, Kathleen, oh, baby. I know she has um, competitive cheer practice tonight, so she wanted to make sure she got that pulled. She hates missing a good giveaway. Ingrid, hello, sweetheart, and welcome. Um, yo, Patty G, hello. You have changed your name again, love. Um, Joe's dropping links. Courtney will also be dropping links tonight for me as we do this. Um, thank you for going live to show us these bowls. Um, ripples. It's really simple. I um do two different kinds, so I'm gonna show you two different ways tonight, and it's really simple. Natalie, hello, sweetheart, and happy Wednesday. So I look really washed out tonight, and I'm sorry, but it's just your standard rope, and then your clothesline, I'm saying. And I've also pre-done one. And I've been working on a lot of projects today. So you know how you shave off your fabric when you're squaring something. So I took that fabric just to show you as a little something different. And this is a burgundy. So I pre-wrapped just what I think I'll need for the little bowl. And then that one will be done. So you'll see two different ways. So I'm going with Luane. Not to get ahead, but are you using just rope or adding fabric? I'm showing you both ways. You can do it two different ways. That's why I'm going to show you both. This one's the plain, and it's going to be a little, it'll come out about like this, and maybe about two and a half, three inches high, and I'll show you how to get that formation. Then the next one I show you, will have a little tidbit of just, all I did was the little scraps from Square on a Project today. And even though it's got the little phrase sticking out, trust me, that's not going to show in your project when we're done. So first and foremost, I'd like to welcome everybody. Thank you for joining me tonight, and I greatly appreciate it. So if you've got your rope, all you, all you do is pull your clothesline off. You're going to need probably about two feet, but do not cut it. You're going to need two straight pins. So I've got my two here, and I'm going to try to show you this way all you're going to do is start folding it over itself as tight as you can get it and you're just going to make a little circle and this is the starting of your bowl after i get a, a like the first little twist in it i like to lay it flat you won't be able to see it there but i'll put it over on this little rainbow so you'll be able to see it and just start turning it as tight as you can get it with your fingers and I'm trying to watch the chat at the same time. And that way you're pushing down. Hello, Rena. Welcome, sweetheart. Thank you for joining. And you're just going to keep twisting and keeping it as flat as you can. 
and we're just going to keep twisting. And you're going to get maybe about an inch and a half for the bottom. And that's where the bottom of your bowl is going to start. You're going to take your pin number one and you're going to slide it through. And you're going to make sure you don't stick yourself. Then you're going to take the second pin and you're going to bring it on the other side. And you're going to stick that through as well. And that's going to hold this in place because now you're going to take it under your sewing machine needle with a straight stitch and you're going to put an X across it. So let me do that and then I'll hold it up and show you where we're at. So once I get it under, I don't want to, my needles in my sewing machine. So now that it's under my pressure foot, I'm pulling the needles and I'm going to go straight across and that's going to just lock this in place. And it works out really nice. And you're going to keep it flat on the table. And then you're going to bring it the other direction. You can do it in a couple different angles. I normally just do two or three. And that's just, like I said, locking your bottom in. But for tonight's purpose to show you, I'm just going to show you. I'm just going to go ahead and do it a couple more times in different angles and I made sure I put a real bright pink so that that's going to show when I'm showing you. So you don't have to trim your threads but I do and I think you're going to be able to see I just did that and that's going to be the base of where you're you can make trivets you can make bowls with these. So I'm going to move my pins out of the way and my snips. And now I'm going to move my machine over to the zigzag. I have my machine set at a 3.5 because I want that to be able to catch in as it's joining through each little section. I want it to zigzag and catch it. And if you go slow when you're first starting, wherever you started right here, you're going to want to make sure that you're putting this, like if you were holding it up to yourself, it's going to look like the letter, like the number nine. Because when you lay it flat, you're going to be able to turn it. So make it look like a nine. So you're going to lay it down. And you're going to put it as close to your foot pedal as you can. And I have mine set, because I know my machine, just as if I was doing a quarter inch. That's the mark I'm going to start at with this because everybody's rope might be different or clothesline. And you're just going to zigzag and you're going to keep your fingers over top of it to keep it flat. You're going to make the base of your bowl whatever size of your choosing. I like to get the base of my bowls, honestly, about three to four inches wide. I don't measure them. I just eyeball them because I know if it's going to go into the bathroom for a um, ring holder or on the dresser, I know what size I like mine to be. So Joe definitely keeps me in clothesline because I'm always making something or it's mindless sewing, really, once you get the hang of it. And I just keep these two fingers here to hold it flat. And then I put this one next to where my pressure foot is. So if it starts to slide, my finger's there to help guide it. But that's just what I've learned. And you're not going to get your finger under the needle by any means because you're not putting your finger under the needle plate or under where the pressure foot is. So it's going to take about 10 I want to say maybe eight to ten rounds and it goes really fast and it, it's kind of mindless looking at the chat too while I'm trying to do this I can speed up a bit and I'll go one more round and one way you want to make sure where you're at, you can leave a pin in it as a marking for a starting point so that you know exactly where you're starting. After doing these for so long, I know my longest line that I make in this is my starting point. So I always make sure I come across and do one long line. 
Hello, Heather. Hello, Shelly. Janine, hi, sweetheart, and welcome. Memoirs of a Long Arm Quilter. Hello, Donna, and everyone. Welcome, sweetheart. Jenny Harris, hello. Thank you, guys. Everybody, um, we've got some amazing content creators in with us tonight. If you haven't checked out their channels, I do ask that you do. Courtney of Peace, Love, and Quilting's in the house. She's one of my moderators. Memoirs of a Long Arm Quilter is outstanding. The two joined forces today and was working on a joint project, Cotton Cuts, It's the Piazza. And I was able to watch it, but I couldn't comment because I was in my vehicle and I didn't know how to get the, um, what do you call it, Bluetooth off. But I could hear what they were saying, but I was watching. And um, I learned something new today, how to shut that off on my cell phone. Sorry, Donna, didn't, the chat keeps bumping around on me. Sorry, Donna, I didn't know you were live today. I was. I'm sorry, sweetheart. I'm just doing real sporadic stuff right now, getting caught up. And I'm sorry, sweetheart, I would never step on your toes, darling. And then we've got um, Sign with the Wayne in the house. He's got his channel straightened out and up and running again. So if you want to check out his content, I believe his link's been dropped. We've also got, I'm trying to look here. We've got um, the Debt Free Quilter. That's Heather. She's in the house tonight. So... Courtney, if you could drop her link, I'd greatly appreciate it. Um, memoirs of a long arm quilter's in the house. Kathy Quilts and Crafts is in the house. Thank you all for popping in. This is not going to be a real long night. We're going to be doing the birthday giveaway. Today's the 7th. That's why I wanted to make sure we come on tonight. Um, I would have done it earlier, but I was waiting on Bebe. She had... A few things that she had to take care of, and she won't be with us tonight for the giveaway, but she's done the name picking. So, I've got my base, and someone's going to ask, so I'm going to go ahead and measure it. One, two, three, four. Mine is five inches across, but you can do your base however long you want. I didn't want to step on you, love. I did send peeps over. That is not a problem, sweetheart. There's enough room for replay for both, but I appreciate it, honey. Um, Nelly, Donna, and Quilters, um, trying to, everybody saying hello. So now what you do is take a couple of your fingers, I use all four because I'm using a five inch, and you just gently slide those under the rope, under your base, you're just going to slide in, and about two or three times around, and like I said, you're going to want to know where your mark is, and that's going to tell you when to start turning. So, as you can see, I might need to mark that for you, but this is my long line. So, I'm coming up on my long line, so I'm going to just go ahead and put a pin in so you'll be able to see. So, I do three, three times around, we're going to go, with just a couple fingers under. So, we're on the second one, and you got to really make sure that you're catching everything. But in the end, you're going to be able to, if you've missed anything, because you're going to zigzag in and out through it all to make sure all of your loose ends are all tied together. I just slid off. And that happens. And so all you do is back it up. And I picked it up, picked up where I left off. And make sure... Your rope's handy dandy. And now I'm going to come up a little bit further. And I started with my fingers. Now I'm all the way up to the palm of my hand going. And you're just going to do three times around like this at this angle. And this is where the side of your bowl is going to be made. Sorry, I can't watch the chat. Give me just a few seconds and I'll get caught up. Hello, Mary. 
We'll need to watch the replay. I just got started and I'm going to do a second small one, sweetheart. So you're not missing anything, babe. Hello, June, and welcome. Nancy Gus, hello. Jenny Harris, hello. Mary Vidit, V-I-T-I, -I, just subscribed and welcome, sweetheart. I appreciate you joining us. I'm trying to catch up. Road Bulls, absolutely. Welcome, Mary, and I appreciate you joining. So you're going to go your three times around here, and then you're going to bring it up even further to get that deep edge. But I'm going to show you how simple that is. I, anytime I'm doing the rope bowls, depending on what room it's going to go in or whose home it's going to be blessed to, I always kind of check it out and say, okay, what colors do they want or what colors would they need? If I'm using just the white rope, I make sure that I pick the thread that's going to match because in the end, it's going to really make it look a lot nicer. So I've made it to the third round. So now I'm going to come up a little bit further. And I'm going to push it all the way tight up against my machine. And I'm going to go three more rounds here. And this is not going to be a deep bowl. It's going to be a shallow one that you can use for rings or candy in your living room or whatever. Candy next to your sun machine. This is just a really fun, simple, inexpensive. You can buy clothesline for like two bucks. And out of each one, you can get several of these bowls. I like to call it a little bit of mindless sewing, to be honest. But after today's live, I had a few of the ladies want to learn how to make them, and I said I would go live tonight real quick and do it. Otherwise, I couldn't get it on my books. And as you can see, when your clothesline unrolls, you're going to get these little bumps and kinks. I keep mine in a little jar next to me. And I just stop for a minute and I twist it out. And I'm, I'm at the third time going around now. So I'm going to bring it up a little bit further. And where my fingers are going to go is under the rim that we just built. I'm going to tuck them in and slide them up. And that's going to give you the true side edge that you want. This one's going to be probably about two and a half, three inches tall on the sides. Because this one's going to go into my bathroom. And be prepared. You're going to use a lot of bobbins if you're doing the bigger bowls. So I always have my pre-wounds ready. And like I said, you can make one of these in about 10 or 15 minutes, this size. I have um, did lives to where we did great big potato chip bowls where you can dump a whole bag of chips in them for the grants. It's just one of those fun crafts that you can do, and they come together quick and easy. Sounds like a jet plane are going, but I'm going a little faster than I normally do. And make sure you get all the little rolls out of it. And I'm going to show you two different ways to tie off on it at the end. Since this is going in my bathroom, I'm going to do this just as a straight top. But the other one, I'll wind off with a nicer top that has a little pivot at the end. And just keep your fingers are not anywhere near your needle at all any time during this. And I'm almost to the end. So I'm just going to go ahead and use up this bit I've got cut off and ready to go. Then I'll show you how to put a little few decorations on the inside of it. Sounds like a 757 coming through the sewing room.
There are so many different things that you can add to these. And one day when I have time, I'll do a big one and show you. You can add um, wooden balls on it, wooden, those clay beads. You can do so many different things. You can leave little pockets and snip it so it'll spray. It's just a lot of different things. And these just come together ever so nicely. Now I'm trying to get my top to go a little bit more out, so I'm letting the bowl come down just a bit, not very much. And all you're basically doing is still feeding it under the needle. Do you wipe? Um, let me see. Have you ever wrapped fabric on your rope? Yes, I'm going to do that one here in a second. Hold on just a second. Um, yes, I do, Jenny. Hold on. Teresa Louise, audio is coming off and on. Is that better now? It might be my machine. That's I'm not sure. Really is it the machine doing it? Let me know if I'm clear. I'm sorry. We're having a bad storm tonight. Those are a lot of work. Um, Losing sound, it is hard to keep it on there. No, it's not hard at all. All you do is keep your fingers, you're, they're not going to go under your needle at all. Can you guys still hear me? It's not a live stream without some sort of technical difficulties. Amen, Heather. It seems like they're happening a lot to all of us. Is it clear now, Heather? Thank you, Teresa Louise. Let me know. It might be the machine doing it. But we've also got a bad storm. Is the, I'm going to try talking and see if, that, if it's the machine. It must be when the machine is on. So is it clear now why the machine's on? Seems to be. I can't. Seems to be. Okay. So maybe it's the machine or the storm. I'm not sure. The last couple of days we've had bad storms here. We hear you fine except for when you were sewing. Okay, Janine, thank you. Is this better if I go slow? I don't want to drown out and I don't want to make anybody have a headache from it. Okay, Lana, thank you. Choppy again, Luane says. Okay. Let me stop again. On our end, Joe says it sounds fine. Around to it. Hello, all. Welcome, Shirley. When you're talking, it's clear. When you're not speaking, it's dead silent. Well, then I'll take that any day of the week. So I'm coming up to the end of the rope. And so I'm going to show you. Joe's going to have to move the camera so right here is the end of the rope and all I'm going to do is fold it in yes when I asked Susie Donna it's hard to wrap the fabric no it really wasn't I'll show you it's really quite simple so I'm coming down to the end here and all I did was fold it in that little tidbit of rope that's left and now I'm gonna just sew that in you can pin it in, but I'm going to go around now. This is where I was telling you, I have one little spot here I know I missed. I didn't catch it in the seam. So what I'm going to do is you're going to see I'm going to be taking the bowl in and out and under. And this is going to just sew in anything that I've missed. Kind of like driving a car. I'm going to pull the pin out now. And it's just going to drive straight under. And I'm just going to put a few designs in along the way. And it's going to make it a little neat design on the inside. These are 100% washable, as you would expect. I let my grand choose them for potato chips, their cookies, whatever they need. And if they get dirty, they just get laundered, just like anything else.
Oh, I saw a spot that was loose, so I want to make sure I hit that. So I'm coming through. And this is like a 15 minute so if I wasn't talking. But I like to put a few extra little swirls in it. I know I'm going to lose the bobbin race probably. And I'm going to come right off. And we've got one bowl done. So this is what it looks like. It's totally finished. And the bottom of it measures five inches across the bottom and seven inches across the top. So it's just something really different. And every one I do, I always just Make sure that I take the machine up and down through. You're not hurting your machine at all. And it gives it a little bit of decoration on the inside. Thank you. I think they're just stinking adorable. I love doing these and they're good. You can drop anything in them. I had to step away. Sorry. I can't see the chat. Hold on. I don't know where that went. I had to step away. Sorry. Oh, I missed saying hello memoirs it's fine sweetheart i'm uh, maureen you're right on other stinking cute kathy can you use cloth clothesline that's i'm using the cotton clothesline and that's just what i choose to use it makes it super simple so the next one i'm going to do i've been asked about the decorating them up a bit so today i was working on some little trivets and a couple other things so anytime I was squaring up a block, I would honestly, to keep it simple, I just, whatever scraps I had, and you just sit and you use one of your clips and you just wrap around. So every time I get about 10 to 12 inches, I would just put a little clip to it just to hold it snug. You could use those as bowl cozies too. Great idea. Absolutely. So... I'm going to do the next one, and we're going to do it just like we did the first one. You're just going to roll it under. This one has the little fuzzy from where I cut it. And you're going to get a couple little turns in, and you're going to come back over just like we did the first time. And you're just going to hold it as flat as you can and start turning it. I'm not going to bother with changing my thread. And I've made it about three turns so now i'm going to stick the pin in for those that came late and that's just going to hold it together until i can get it under the needle once i get the pressure foot on it it's going to hold tight so i'm going to do the cross going through it so i've took my clip off and i'm going to get it under the needle and the pressure foot as i said is going to hold it still you're going to take the, your machine back to a straight stitch for a minute. Pop out your needles, your pins, so that they're out of your way. You don't want to forget. And you're just going to come straight across, just like you did the first time. And that's going to lock everything in place. You're going to do it a couple times. And these are so stinking versatile. This one here, it's a burgundy, so I'm, this one will get put up and set out for Christmas, and we'll put a little bit of Christmas candy in it for when the kids are here. So I've got the cross on it. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it comes down here, and I have my longer side that went all the way to the edge. That way I'll know where I'm at. So I'm going to put my machine back on the zigzag, and like I said in the beginning, it's at a three. 3.5, I'm sorry, stitch length. You're going to lay it down, making the nine, just like we did the first time. That way, as you're rolling it, it's going to roll this way, and you're going to be feeding it up. So you're going to lay it flat, and you're going to start zigzagging, and you're going to make your bottom however big you want. I didn't put a lot of fabric on this one, so this is going to be a small one just for demonstration. And I didn't change my thread out. This is just to show you guys. And you're going to do it just like you did before. Figure out how big you want your bottom. I've got two clips here because that's where my fabric was laying. 
and I only use scraps on this. You can use any kind if you want to cut strips. I've did the um bowl cozies so along, and um we've done those with where we were cutting inch or half inch strips. And that was quite fun. I like to do a lot of trivets. We've got our kitchens inundated with them. But they come in handy to sit everything that's hot on your counter or whatever. You can just pop them right out and you're there. If the kids bring in a pizza pie, you don't want the box to steam up your table. You've got a trivet. You can make them whatever size you'd like. And these make great stocking stoppers, little gifts for the mailman. They come in quite handy. So like I said, I didn't wrap a lot of fabric on this one. So this is going to be small. So I'm going to start now tipping up my side. And I'm only going to go around a couple times because, like I said, this one's going to be small. But you can make them any size you'd like. I'm going to pop my clips because I'm at both clips now. And that's just where your fabric met. You definitely, definitely on this need to use your clips. When you're sitting in front of the TV at night, put your strips and have them ready. And you just sit there while you're watching a good show or a YouTube video. And just wrap it however dense you want it. I like to have the design showing the fabric. But I've made the rope bowls to where... They're really thick and all you can see is the fabric. You can't even tell they're a rope bowl. So it's just really whatever you would like. So I've went around twice. Now I'm going to start coming up just a bit more. You see, you could also use ribbon. That would be amazing. I'll have to do that. The dead free quilter. Oh, spilt milk. Well, better spilt than bleached. Absolutely. You never cry over spilt milk. All we do is clean it up if it's the little minions doing it. Someday they're going to have little minions to chase after and clean up. So I'm at the end of my fabric for this one. So I'm just going to top it off now. I've got a good base and use up what little bit of line I have here. Like I said, this one's going to just be something small for demonstration. And if you want some time, we can do a little sew evening and I'll have the viewers come in, the subscribers come in and we can just sit and sew for a bit and work up some. These make amazing Christmas gifts. And it looks like you put hours of work into them to just sit and basically all you're doing is sewing in circles. I'm, I'm taking it up just a little bit more. And then I'm going to do this one like I did the other one. I always sew through the fabric to give it that little bit of a design. And honestly, when I'm definitely doing nothing but sewing my road bowls, I honestly... And use a laugh at me. It's I definitely have extra bobbins rounds because that's an essential. You need that. I see a, I missed the spot, so I'm going to stop because I didn't want it to get all buggered up there because I've got a couple more rounds to go. So I'd rather catch it now. And it it doesn't hurt a thing to just stop what you're doing and fix it. And all I did was tack it in because I'll catch it when we're finished. Let me see. 
pleasant meeting you have to go i'll rewatch. be safe good night mary and thank you for joining great way to use up scraps absolutely ingrid these are awesome i'm almost at the end of my rope <laughs> But I ran out of bobbin. Last, you lost the bobbin. The bobbin will, I'm telling you, I lose the bobbin race a lot on this. Because you've got everything over it between your fingers and the rope bowl. But it's just a real fast, simple, easy, mindless sewing. And you design it however you would like. So, let me... Do a little clean up here on this side. I want to make sure it looks like I missed a spot. But before, I'm going to show you how to put a little design in it. If you hear the fire whistle, we've been alerted to a call, and I'm sorry. So now, if you want to do something fancy with it, it's really simple. All you're going to do is take two of your fingers and put here and make a little pocket. And trust me, it's going to turn out cute. Right now, it doesn't look so hot. So you're going to hold that down out of your way, and you're going to put it back under just like you were starting all over again. And that's all you're going to do. And then when you come around to the other side, it's going to seem weird for a second, but it's going to turn out really stinking cute. So just bear with me. Okay, I'm where the rope where I put that hook. I'm right here now at this side. So I'm hoping you can see. I don't have anything I can put under it that's going to make it darker so you can see. I'll use one of these. If I lay this here, maybe that'll help you take away some of the light so right here you've got the hook so i'm gonna pull that back and i'm just gonna come in like this and you're gonna make sure because now you're gonna go single lane and you're gonna join just those two pieces and in the end you'll be able to see it more clear It's a funny saying when you say you're almost at the end of your rope, but I technically am. Got a few more inches. So this will give it the nice look I was hoping for. It's like a train of coming. Chug, chug, chug. So uh, I'm at the end, so I'm going to just fold it down just like I did on all the others. And tuck it in and press it up as tight as you can with your fingers. All you're doing is finger pressing it in. And now 
whatever's left on the bobbin. I know I'm going to lose the bobbin race and I'm going to lay it down flat because this one here, I just want to put a few designs in so you'll be able to see better. And all I'm doing is just zigzagging crazy. No rhyme or reason, uh, however you choose to do it. One more round, just to make sure the bottom's all locked in. Then I'll be able to show you this one. Like I said, just so it, the machine's going to pull it everywhere it needs to go. We'll end it there. So is that not stinking cute? Let me see. Great way to use up your scraps. Um, those are awesome. I'm almost at the end of my rip. I saw that one. No more. So true, Luane. A great way to use up scraps. Evident. Every time I'm cutting scraps, I'm always thinking of the next project or what I can use it for. And these here, this one has a little bit of a bump. So all you're going to do is take your fingers and just like if it was store-bought, just give it a little push. I have, a, have to skedaddle. I'll watch the rest later. Thanks, Donnie. Good night, all. Janine, good night, sweetheart, and thank you for joining us. So, Ann, I'm here. Ha -ha, I hope you're happy. <laughs> yeah, I'm at the end of my rope. So, we have 44 viewers, and this is just one of those cute little tidbits. And I hope you guys like this project tonight. It's been a fun one. You can make your handles however you would like. This is how you close them off at the tip. And they're, like I said, they're just one more fun project. So in that little bit of no time at all, we've got two. So these are going to my stack of done projects. So I don't know who all is in the chat. But this is the birthday box. It's the giveaway and it'll go out tomorrow. Joe run it into the post office for me. And I appreciate everybody that wished me a happy birthday. It means the world to me. And you don't know what it means when you're having a really rough time aging up, I guess. 58 hit me hard this year. So we're just going to go ahead and do the giveaway. Bebe drew the name before she went to her um, cheer. So she's not in the chat, I don't believe. But we had 100 and I think it was 131. Um, little responses to the birthday project that i said just leave a comment what you'd like to see um what you like about the channel what you don't like about the channel and things like that so i'm asking you do not contact this person if she's not in the chat i'm not going to tell her i don't think she watches the replays very often but i want her to be blessed with a surprise because i really don't see her the only way she's going to know is if somebody in the chat told her. But the winner of this one is Ellen Campbell of Campbell's Creation Learning to Sew. So this will go out to her tomorrow. If anybody happens to have her address. Otherwise, I'm going to have to lurk on her channel and see if I can find it. But I just think it's nice to give back. Happy birthday, 58, younger than me. Turn 58, and I'm telling you what. Just knowing that 60 is knocking at the door in two years. Not ages, but a number, you know? But I don't know why. Emotionally, I guess, because of everything going, I'm going through on other issues in life, you know? But this one hit me harder. I thought 40 would have, 50 would have, but no, 58. Of all the numbers, starting with Elaine, 59 is about a slap me up the side of the head, two months. I get it. I have her address. Patty G, can you email it to me? I greatly appreciate it, but I do wholeheartedly ask. No one tell her. She goes through a lot in life, and I think it would be a fun surprise package. So, I just, every once in a while, life throws you a curve, you know, and I think she's pretty cool. I think she'll be really surprised to get some happy mail. Um, I'm 76. I think everyone is younger than me. 
<laughs> I'm 68. I hope you improve with age. Lord, I hope I do. The body's falling apart at 58. It's my birthday is later this month. Yes, it is. A little birdie told me it's coming up around the corner. Said we're all going to have to hit over there. You look marvelous for 58, darling. Oh, my Lord. I've got the crow's feet. Oh, I'm telling you. But I know that's from me being in the pool all the time. 60 hit me harder this year. I believe it. I don't know why these numbers drive us crazy. Yeah, but everybody, please, please remember, if you're in the chat, do not tell Miss Allen. I'd love her to be surprised. Yeah, we've got a baby in the house. 32-year-old Courtney. We love you, baby. And you'll always be everybody's little sweetheart. All that sweet's on. I'll be 58 next week. Crazy. I know, right? It's just... Life flies faster, like when we're at home with our parents, we can't wait to be 18. At 16, drive a car, 18, you could nip the bottle. Um, 21, you could be out on your own and living the high life, you're finished college, you know. Kids coming, life hits ya. You blink, your kids are grown. And now I'm on the grandkids and one ready to graduate high school this year. It's like, bam, you blink and life's passing you by. Happy birthday, happy birthday. God love you. I swear I'm going to come to your channel and I'm going to sing happy birthday to you. And you're going to love it. I sing so sweet. <laughs> I love you, Stephanie. You're amazing. Your secrets are just between us. Absolutely. LOL, I missed the one year for two emergency surgeries. Ever since then, I typically don't know how old I am. I'm vacuum locked. Well, that's the way to do it, love. I just turned 64. Kathy, I understand you. I've got siblings. I'm the baby of the family, so I think that's part of it. I'm kicking and screaming going into the next stage of life. I'm going to be 40 next year. I can hardly believe it. I know, right? I, it's like I blinked. My kids... You couldn't wait on them to stand up, walk, and talk, and then you spend the rest of your life telling them to sit down and shut up. But you want them to listen. So it's just, life flies by. So, Joe's going like this, you're rambling, you're rambling. <laughs> I'm teasing. He's going, I am not. So, make sure you guys, shh, keep a secret. I don't want her to know. Give it about, it'll go out tomorrow, so sometime next week we should be hearing from her. So it'll kind of be funny to see what she says, if she says anything. It's just a little happy meal. So you guys have a fabulous evening. Take care, God bless, and if you're joining Courtney and I tomorrow, Teresa Louise has testing, she'll be missing us, but we're going to be kicking off the next project in the um three yard quilt so that's gonna be fun so take care god bless you you just have a fabulous evening and i'll see you back in the next life bye